Hello, everyone, and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So we're already getting into the school year and many of you are stuck studying and learning new things from school. So I thought, why not take a break? Why not in the midst of your studies, take a moment to step outside to look up at the night sky and check out some of these cool things that you can see up in the nighttime sky to allow yourself a mental break. Believe it or not, studies have shown that if you take 10 to 15 minute breaks every now and then, you actually study better. So allow me to show you some of the things you can see and to observe while you're taking that nice breather from your studies. So just to give you a rough idea of a couple of things that you can see in the evening sky tonight, if you look towards the western horizon just shortly after sunset, you can see two planets in the early evening sky. Over towards the western horizon, you'll see like these, this trio of three stars, but actually two of them are planets. The one that's hugging the western horizon is actually the planet Mercury. And the really bright one is the planet Venus. So in the early evening sky tonight, you can see two planets. Let's check out these planets up close and personal. So the program I'm using is called Stellarium. It is a free planetarium program that you can download for any electronic device, whether it's your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, any electronic device, it can be downloaded for free and it's fun, it's and it's easy to interact with. And you, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, each time you click on an object, it tells you a ton of information that you can learn about the nighttime sky. So one of the neat things you can do with the program is you can zoom in on objects by simply clicking on the object and doing the center on selected object and use your scroll wheel to zoom in. You can check out unique objects in the sky. So let's check out the planet Mercury. Now, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Even though sometimes people think, oh, Mercury is technically the hottest planet because it's so close to the sun, that's actually not true. Mercury is the second hottest planet. The title of hottest planet goes to Venus and we'll talk about her in just a couple of minutes. Mercury, is sometimes what I like to refer to as the fire and ice planet. On the daytime side, it's incredibly hot, over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But on the nighttime side, it's negative 120 degrees below zero. The reason being for this discrepancy is because Mercury doesn't have much of an atmosphere. So it's heated on one side, but on the other side, it doesn't retain all the heat from the sun side side. And so on the nighttime side, it basically freezes over. For the longest time, we weren't able to get a full map of Mercury. And the reason being is because one side of Mercury, at least a good portion of it, was difficult to take images of because in order to get that one little slit, you had to be at the right position and you had to be really close to the sun. So most spacecraft that we sent towards Mercury it was incredibly difficult to get different images of it. It wasn't until the spacecraft messenger, which had this amazing solar shield, that it was able to turn its back towards the sun with this amazing shield and actually take photographs of the daytime side of Mercury. So now if you wanna check out Google Mercury, you can check out the surface of Mercury in its completion. All right, let's check out Venus. The other little third star is actually indeed a star. That's the star Spica. So you have Mercury, Spica, and Venus. So if you had a pair of binoculars or a small telescope and you were to look at the planet Mercury, you'll notice it kind of looks like this oblong sphere, but it's very bright in the telescope. Up close and personal, we see some unique details of Venus. Now, Venus is often referred to as the early morning or early evening star because 
she's incredibly bright. She's one of the brightest objects in the night sky. And when you look at her, she is a bright beacon and it looks like a very bright star. However, she's not a star. And sometimes she's referred to as our sister planet only because we're about the same size. But that's where our similarities end because Venus is a really nasty planet. She has active live volcanoes. She has a very thick atmosphere of poisonous gases. And the temperature there is incredibly hot, over 900 degrees Fahrenheit on the daytime side and the nighttime side because of her thick atmosphere, she has a runaway greenhouse effect. So she constantly stays this inferno temperature all the time. So hence why we haven't really visited Venus lately. However, in the next few years, we are planning to send more spacecraft to Venus to study her climate, as well as some of the active volcanoes on Venus to hopefully learn a little bit more about our sister planet. Right. Not only can you see two planets in the early evening sky, you can see another two planets as well. So in total, you can see four planets just shortly after sunset. So the best time to take a look at these four planets is roughly around about eight o'clock tonight, just as the sun sets, look towards not only the west, but the southeast. In the southeast, you have the bright planets Saturn and Jupiter. So you can see two gas giants and you can see two terrestrial planets in the same sky tonight. So let's check out these two planets really quickly. And then we'll look at some of the deep sky and other objects you can see in the nighttime sky. Now, if you have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, this is kind of what you would see. You would see a bright disk that's surrounded by a ball, or a bright disk surrounding a ball. And that's kind of what Saturn is. Saturn is often nicknamed the Lord of the Rings because it has this beautiful ring system that many people recognize. Some of these stars that you see around Saturn are actually moons of Saturn. To date, thanks to the Cassini-Huygens mission, we have detected over 83 moons around Saturn. This bright fuzzball right here is actually one of the moons of Saturn that many astronomers are interested in. It's called Titan. Titan is the only moon in our solar system to have an atmosphere. But an up close and personal view of Saturn, you can definitely see the beautiful rings. They're not solid. They're composed of particles, some as tiny as a grain of sand to boulders as big as a house. And they all go in orbit around Saturn. For as long as they are, they're exceptionally thin. The average distance from the top of the rings to the bottom of the rings is the same distance between the two goalposts on a football field. For as big as a planet it is, the rings are really, really thin. But they are exceptionally long. If this was an, an imaginary racetrack, it would take you five years to run one lap. Crazy, right? All right, let's head to Jupiter. Now, if you have a pair of binoculars or small telescope, this is kind of what you could see. You see a bright planet in the center, plus these four little stars that trail off to the right. Those four stars are actually the Galilean moons. They were first discovered by Galileo Galilei. And they're some of the bigger moons around Jupiter. To date, Jupiter has over 65 moons, but we are detecting more thanks to the Juno mission. But when you take an up close and personal view of Jupiter, you'll notice these beautiful colored bands. These are the cloud tops of Jupiter. Since Jupiter rotates incredibly fast for its size, it doesn't have curly Q clouds like what we do here on Earth. 
Instead, it has straight bands for cloud tops. And the reason being is because one day on Jupiter is 10 hours on Earth. So for every one day Earth goes through, Jupiter has gone through two days. So since it rotates incredibly fast, its clouds go straight because it has that much energy to basically cause the jet streams to go in straight lines. And Jupiter itself is exceptionally big. In fact, just to give you a rough idea, Jupiter is so big that all the other planets could fit inside of it. It's that huge. All right, now that we've checked out some of the planets you can see, let's take a look at some of the constellations you can find. And let's look towards the south right here. You'll notice this bright star, Antares. This bright star, Antares, is a part of the constellation Scorpius, the scorpion. However, the Polynesians called this star, called this group of stars, Maui's fishhook. So if you're familiar with the Disney movie Moana, you'll recognize this group of stars. In fact, many cultures called different constellations by different names. In fact, you can call a constellation whatever you would like. In astronomy, we call that an asterism because sometimes ancient people use a little bit of imagination to kind of fit the theme of what story they were telling. And sometimes those constellations don't exactly fit the connect the dots. So if you wanna call it something that makes sense to you, by all means, go ahead. It'll be your own personal asterism. So right next to the constellation Scorpius, the scorpion right here, is this unique constellation over here. It's supposed to signify a half man, half horse kind of guy, Sagittarius, but I don't see that. To me, I call it the asterism, the teapot, because you kind of see a lid here and there's the spout and the teapot itself and there it's this handle. But believe it or not, Sagittarius' spout points to something really interesting. And if you get away from the city lights, far away to where you don't have to worry about city glow, you can see something really unique. It'll look like a fuzzy cloud in the sky. In fact, allow me to show you. It'll kind of look like this. This fuzzy cloud in the sky is our Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy seen edge on. And Sagittarius points to the exact center of it. Straight up above, you'll see these three stars that kind of form a triangle. These three bright stars are in three different constellations. This top star is called Vega. The bottom left star is called Deneb. And the, and the bottom right star is called Altair. Vega is in the constellation of Lyra, the lyre, or the harp in this case. Deneb is in a part of the constellation Cygnus, the swan. And Altair is a part of the constellation Aquila, the eagle. I mean, you kind of can see an eagle out of this. It kind of looks like the, the eagle like you see on the back of a quarter with its wings spread. But sometimes I like to connect the dots right here and pretend it's a stingray. So you can call it whatever you want. But let's look over here towards the east. I wanna show you something really unique. So over here towards the east, you'll see this square shaped constellation. This represents the constellation Pegasus, the cosmic winged horse. And you kind of can see that, but yeah, to me, I don't see a cosmic winged horse out of this. I like to refer to it as what the famous cowboy poet Baxter Black called it. He called it the great baseball diamond in the sky. And you kind of can see a baseball diamond. Here's home, here's first, here's second, here's third. You got the pitcher here, you got the catcher, you got the umpire back here, and you got the shortstop over here. 
So you kind of can see a baseball diamond out of it. So if you go from home to first, past the right fielder, past the center fielder, and notice how it kind of makes this trail out of the stadium, you kind of see this little fuzzy thing right there. That little fuzzy thing, let's progress the night just a little more. Yeah, you see that little fuzzy thing right there? That little fuzzy thing is the faintest thing you can see with your unaided eye. And it's 2.5 million light years away from us. So let's check it out. This is the Andromeda galaxy, our sister galaxy, which is 2.5 million light years away from us. So even though she's our sister galaxy, she's still really, really far away. She's often called our sister galaxy because she's a spiral galaxy, kind of like us, even though we're kind of more of a barred spiral galaxy, but we are similar in size, as well as we also have certain different features in our spiral arms that are very similar to one another. So when I mentioned the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, we're actually looking into the past because the light coming from Andromeda galaxy has taken 2.5 million years to reach us. So we're looking at the Andromeda galaxy as it was 2.5 million years ago. Crazy, right? All right, so these are some of the constellations, planets, and deep sky objects you can see in the early evening tonight, just shortly after sunset, and progressing on to the evening just a little bit. So if you just need to have that few moments of a little bit of a break, here's what you can look for. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments below. If there's a topic you would love for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.